think just to kind of add to Pratik's point, probably we'll see more and more utilities coming in and taking our projects because end of the day, it's they are in the business of running plants and supplying electricity. So unlike probably a lot of platforms today who are you know looking at churning this asset once they achieve a size and a return. So I see that probably over a medium term, we'll see more uh, consolidation from players like let's say SEMCOP, how they acquired, came in and acquired. And there are a couple of large uh, European utilities who already set up shops in India, who would eventually take a large chunk of this, this scattered, I would say, uh, assets. And then there will be uh, these yield cores or, or there will be again a parallel uh, class of investors from inv who would seek infrastructure returns, as Pratik said, who would take, but my sense is that over uh, medium term it would become like a 50-50 between uh, those strategic investors and utilities and balance between financial players, I would say. You know, uh, I think there is a third uh, category. It's uh, not very common. But uh, the foreign developers who haven't really been able to make a mark in India, uh, just to try and sort of uh, achieve that, would also be guys who are interested in these projects. We've seen uh, quite a few foreign developers come to try and uh, understand uh, these projects uh, to acquire them. But of course, uh, their primary criteria has to be that it's uh, an NTPC backed uh, PPA because they want that comfort that even if the returns are less, they are assured in these projects. Uh, and then, of course, you know, they expand with their uh, own modules in uh, further bids. So I think that's a third uh, criteria category of uh, people we've seen uh, in interested in acquisition space. People of Mr. Basan are looking to get onto it now. <laughs> so, Karan, on, on, this, on the same, I mean, staying with you, right, uh, clearly you mentioned that the interest is on, say, NTPC style PPAs. Obviously, what, what distinguishes NTPC from other off-takers, one, a good credit standing from a financial credit point of view, and two, a good reputation for having honored obligations. How do you see, uh, you know, for example, just a few weeks ago, I think we had the fifth annual DISCOM uh, ratings that came out, and obviously there are no surprises out there. It still does paint, uh, even after a few years down the line with Udai, still paint, paints a very uh, difficult picture for discoms in India. How do you see that, or how do you see renewables, uh, the renewable industry cap boxing that risk and managing that risk of essentially discoms not honoring the PPA? Uh, it, it's a big risk, and I think that is one of the primary reasons why the credit ratings are also affected, affected adversely. Most of these uh, discoms are debt driven, which is why we had the Uday scheme to try and uh, take away that, uh, take away half the component of debt. But uh, although some Uday schemes have been successful, the discom uh, risk still remains. And I think the one question I haven't seen addressed uh, in the entire day to day is in my understanding, renewable energy is a tripod, and generation is just one aspect of the tripod tripod. We haven't ever spoken about transmission or distribution. So assuming we reach that target of 100 uh, gigawatt, 175 gigawatt, I don't think we have the infrastructure to uh, for in the transmission or the distribution space. And with these PPAs not having deemed generation, we'll be left nowhere but uh, with losses in spite of the generation happening. So in addition to the uh, situation or the financial ability of the DISCOMs, the infrastructure is not uh, enough. And I think it's high time we start focusing on those two aspects in addition to generation, because generation as of now seems to be doing fine. It's these two aspects which will even kill generation in the longer run. I think that's a very uh, interesting take that uh, Karan has given. Uh, because uh, you know, transmission is one sector where, again, we, we've just seen one uh, Inuit and we've seen these uh, bouts of you know project <coughs> tendering and then again a period of lull. So I think this is again uh, one of those sectors where there has been an intent, we've seen an intent from the government and the Ministry of Power to develop that sector. However, <coughs> there has to be a sustained now pipeline to build the so-called green corridors or uh, evacuation for distributed uh, platforms, rather uh, for utility scale platforms. 
because uh, today as we where we stand rooftop is still some time before we have this those distributed generation uh, platforms in place so i think transmission is one area where there is a definite need for uh, investment and probably the next area of growth where we'll see and distribution is a little tricky because there's it, it also has a developmental aspect to it or a social aspect to it and while there have been you know private discoms uh, they haven't delivered very significant but i would say they have been primarily concentrated to one larger uh, cities and uh, it's not been tested where whether they'll support those social objectives so as i said uh, distribution will remain a pain probably for a while because it also comes it is also a reflection of society i would say because you know a pill fridge or or theft or uh, you know not paying for bills is is what some is something which is continued over a period and which has been largely politically supported also because politicians haven't uh, tried to tame the bull and they have they have allowed you know they have not allowed rather discoms to raise tariffs and of course discoms have also not done their part in terms of cutting losses but you know to a large extent uh, there were there were these challenges that we see today have accumulated over a period these these are not overnight things which have happened and they will be addressed probably again in a similar way they they will improve uh, you know gradually it, it's not going to happen overnight but then unless that happens the sector will continue to suffer you know uh, so with with discoms is not just a issue of you know payment and payment delays it's also a question of curtailment because of poor infrastructure do you as lenders have any mechanism by which you have a list of good discoms and bad discoms or discoms which you do penalize for the fact that they were you know they have had curtailment issues in the past do you kind of have a list that you kind of use when you look at new project financings so uh, as you'd mentioned there's a standard uh, discom rating list which you know uh, which one gives you a clear perspective on their payment track record and their performance record so which which acts as a you know a deciding factor i would say and then there have been certain states in the past who who've been notorious i would use that word and and discoms uh, who have you know done curtailment or not paid uh, on time even on ppas or maybe uh, not even signed ppas let's say uh, under announced policies so lenders are watchful of course uh, you know i can't crystal ball gaze and see what a state would do two years from now but then we are very clear on the day of on the day we are evaluating the project we definitely look at the discom we also look at the evacuation plan which the borrower has been given and uh, check the capacities at those respective substations if they are there and take a call which is that but of course uh, as you said it is difficult to see what would they will do and if there's if they do <coughs> a backing down for two years down i don't know but yes on the day island i definitely look at which discom i am getting into karan uh, you know in terms sorry just to add on to that and you know on your question of rooftop uh, we have seen a lot of practical challenges in uh, rooftop thresh getting ppas executed because the discoms are not interested in those uh, ppas primarily because their revenue will go down drastically with the net metering concept and uh, you know the most of these uh, uh, rooftop ppas are on industrial houses and the tariffs are much higher in the industrial area so we've seen uh, a lot of resistance coming from these discoms in actually getting the ppa executed so other than you know ipp players where maharashtra is there's a huge problem there in the rooftop space this is another challenge uh, vis a vis the entire financing piece where the lenders are not getting comfort so now with the new regulations in place uh, ppa in such cases discounts are not required because it is under net metering it is binding as per regulation they have to install a net metering net meter and that will be accounted for that is binding as per regulation installation of that net metering they have who's being monitored by the regulator on yes and i think absolutely the problem is not the regulation if you take them to regulator 
they have to do it on the same day. They are reluctant. The problem, uh, because it is not there. The problem, sir, is of enforcement. As you are saying, you will have to take them to the regulator. It is not a process where you take them to the regulator. The regulator sits for a day, and the next day the net meter is installed. Yes, it, it is going to be a time-consuming process. Maybe it happens like this only. If you go to the regulator today, it will be installed within months. I think Mr. Kejriwal will be very happy to hear that. Kejriwal <laughs> is a separate issue. Otherwise, discount Delhi are also not paying. They are also not paying. Karan, on the same topic of discounts, right? Uh, we are also seeing another new wave, especially with these lower, lower bids. A lot of discounts kind of having uh, buyer's remorse, turning around and not signing PPAs or uh, not executing the PPA that has kind of been agreed upon. Do you see any legal recourse to uh, f to developers, especially where they've already sunk equity or debt into the project? Yes, uh, the legal recourse is there, but I think this is more of a practical challenge of the first developer standing up and challenging the first discom in doing that. I don't think any developer is doing that because he has to do business in the country and I mean, he would sort of be ostracized in my view if he does that, uh, although logically that is what should happen. Uh, but legally, uh, the RFS uh, and the RFS, if he's not signing the PPA and the provisions of the PPA are clearly enforceable in the developer being able to meet his uh, rights. It again will be a time consuming process considering it's code driven, uh, but it, it is doable. The question is whether anyone would want to take that uh, chance. And as lenders, do you now insist on a signed PPA before disbursement or are you still comfortable uh, having PPAs done post-COD? Probably until uh, last year or so, we'd still gone ahead with you know, investors where we had comfort to have uh, you know, a time till commissioning for PPAs. But looking at the way things are headed, I mean, a state ERC has jumped in out of nowhere saying that you, know, you should look at lower tariffs on signed PPAs. Of course, uh, now we are also going one step ahead of, probably we'll be going one step ahead, we've, we've not done uh, projects uh, after this new development, but probably we'll go ahead and ask them to get uh, ERC clearance also before they come for financing because if the PPAs are not honored, those are the very basis of financing. I mean, if that goes for a toss, then I think there's nothing stopping. Do we have any further questions from the audience before I kind of move to the last point on my agenda? I have a rather question to the audience. Now, I'm sure they are, everybody is seeing these. I mean, while we are just financiers, there's equity. You are the equity guys on the other side. And you would have your you know, returns in question if discoms continue to behave the way they've been. So what is the industry doing in terms of engaging with uh, probably you know, regulators or, or even uh, ministries to tie up that end? because that end I see continues to be something which which is unaddressed today. Yeah, just, just to answer that, it also depends on the kind of problem you have, right? Because currently we're uh, handling a situation where the government, uh, the state government has suddenly said that the stamp duty on uh, uh, annex property will be uh, 12 times higher than what they paid, in spite of it being adjudicated. Uh, so that is a court battle that we're fighting and we're hoping to sort of uh, win. And on the other side, you have uh, situations where you have to coax and coerce. And as you're aware, Maharashtra is now signing PPAs in the wind space. It's taken its time. It's taken more than a year and a half. But I think they finally got down to signing the PPAs. So. <laughs> Maybe since we are in a technology conference, that was a solar technology conference, I should probably end. Any further questions?
No, you said you have unsigned PPAs. I have signed PPA and executed, which has expired. So I spent a couple of millions of rupees and get the PPA extended for another one year. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us? Tomorrow we can see the in Maharashtra. Uh, it would actually depend on the project viability and I guess the vendors would be able to answer that question better but the basics of the project have... Uh, there are... Correct. Maybe we can discuss this after... No, but we keep that in mind. This is a common thing that's need to be addressed. Sure. Sure, but, but um, just to answer that at a, a broad level, uh, a, a project is taken up on its own viability. Uh, the developer or the name of the developer is just one of the aspects, not the only aspects that the bank take into mind. So, uh, of course, your specific case can be discussed post this discussion. You know, we have got a 125 panel manufacturers in India who are making substandard panels, getting sales for China. So, your balance sheet alone cannot be the main thing to design a panel. So, you need to have a technical complete of people. The same thing, the break even point is only tiny. You don't have to think of 25 years or 30 years or 50 years of the solar. Uh, you talk about a break even point of 10 years. What's, ten years, ten what's years, the basis years, for that? Ten years, 10 years you get back to work. Who? The lenders? Yeah. They are getting debt of 18 years. There is no way they are going to get back. The, the, the debt book is 18 years. You are getting 10 years. Maybe as of today, maybe. Maybe maximum switch it under 20. 13 years. If I get zero interest per ads from abroad, I can get it. I am going to get Problem is the money is dried up abroad. The money is in India today. And this 2.44 times we are talking about now, nobody has called the hidden factors behind that. What kind of favors the government have done to those things, the promoters. That problem has never been addressed at all. I can cite five points. We, we take that uh, off Yeah, we take that off There is no point in just discussing the same thing. Everything is available on the left side. Everyone's on the left side. Everything whatever we discuss today. Sure, no, we take that off there. So, no, this needs to be taken up at the government level, at the right level, not the mineral level. You two, we have this conducting this summit. Sure, sure. So, to make sure that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go down further. Absolutely. So, that you only will be mixed up. No, I think all of us will, but yeah, we'll take that up after this. Any further questions? So, the balance sheet alone, right? We have to make sure that the balance sheet alone is not a big problem. Sorry to ask. Of these uh, NESCO private PPL projects as a non legal funding, what are things the financials look at? Sorry, major points which they look at to find out whether they are non legal. On other legal. Uh, okay, uh, as a legal counsel and having worked with banks, I think the biggest problem in a NESCO is uh, the size, number one, number two, the security. Because uh, there's no point of having security over just a panel, and you don't have a security over the, you know, the underlying land. Uh, so I guess these are the two biggest problems for the financier to fund uh, so projects. Size, as the local said, can be taken care of when you aggregate. Uh, security would uh, continue to remain a challenge. What are those problems? Uh, so, so uh, another thing that Mukun said that it should be a part of construction finance itself, which is being implemented uh, now in India as well. Uh, that the cost of the solar panel is a part of the construction finance itself, and the securities on uh, 
for the existing risk course. We are working on uh, uh, models of uh, assignability of contracts for substitution instead of the conventional hypothecation and mortgages. And uh, vis a vis the power purchase agreements, uh, we insist on two things. Number one, uh, like you have in concession agreements, there have to be termination payments. Uh, the percentages may vary depending on whose default it is. And second, considering it's a private contract, you need to have arbitration in that. It is crucial to have arbitration because a court driven process will lead you nowhere. So, yeah, I mean, it's a long way to go, but uh, these are the two things you look at in the PPA. And from a security perspective, we're devising mechanisms of assignment to try and uh, outbeat the conventional hypothecation and mortgage. So, but. So in kind of RESCO projects, when you are selling to selling power to industries, one uh, one one way to think about it is why do you have to go to a lender for setting up every project? Maybe you can use equity and set up set, set up projects within a reasonable amount of time to the to the extent that it becomes reasonable size for a lender to look at it. Say you you build up projects based on equity 20-25 megawatt, and then you go to a lender, show the show the lender portfolio. And the lender may look at it as a as a portfolio uh, which has operation history, which will make life easier for the lender. Sorry, scalability. Scalability is a concern, right? So that is so that is a challenge. Yeah. So you have to you have to build it quickly. Yeah. yeah. What is the ROI you look at when you are financing? What is the rate of interest? Is yeah, so rate of interest? like you mentioned, for utility scale projects, you're talking about utility scale projects. For utility scale projects with government PPAs, it is between 10 to 20 percent, the interest rate currently in the market, which will depend on a lot of things like who is the borrower, who is the off taker, viability of the project, cash flows on the project, tariff, PPA, all those things. The tenure is? The tenure is anywhere between 14 to 17, 18 years. Thank you. you know, again, just on the tenor, the RBI has come out with the 525 uh, flexible restructuring scheme. Uh, uh, basically, what that scheme says is that uh, vendors can extend uh, the tenor up to 25 years depending on certain criteria. Obviously, it has to be 80% of the actual project life, which can be the maximum tenor. Uh, and uh, after every five years, that project gets refinanced. So it helps the vendors to do an uh, ALM match. Uh, at the same time, extend the tenure to uh, 25 years, subject to meeting the criteria of that circular. This is for renewable or solar? Uh, it is uh, for uh, uh, infrastructure projects in general. So solar is a subset of that. Sorry? You know, as a lender, as he said, you know, 10 to 12 percent to the actual utility projects. What, as an equity investor, what you should look at is what is residual availability you think of it. And that's what, it's, it's not a problem of the lender, it's a problem of the, of the investor. It, it, it depends from uh, where you are coming from, because if you're coming from uh, Paris where you're getting a negative return on your investment, then add out of 5 percent would also be magical. But uh, the top of my head, uh, lenders have expected IRRs of uh, above fourteen percent. Where it goes beyond that, yeah. Uh, in sorry, uh, in uh, Resco model, uh, uh, actually investors are taking interest in industries and educational institutes, but they're not taking interest in uh, housing societies, in you know, RWA. So, uh, do you see any hope in that sector? No. And the reason for that is creditworthiness. The housing society, uh, and I say this passionately because I'm trying to do the same for my society, uh, the, uh, any uh, developer will not be comfortable with uh, a PPA signed with a housing society because the in most societies, the RWA and the housing society have a mismatch which is evident to the developer and he doesn't want to take that credit risk without security you know so he'll have contractual comfort 
So you want reliability of the counterparty you're dealing with. And if the housing society, I mean, if you're looking at DLF and you're not doing it for a lot of projects of DLF, that's a different thing. You're taking a call on the developer. But for a typical housing society, given the credit risk already there with lack of security, I don't think many rescos would take that model up. But they want to go for, uh, go for financing from the bank. So there is a government of India circular that these uh, residential projects should be taken as home loans or home improvement loans. So many banks are, I think, uh, still not uh, doing that uh, because uh, I, I don't know if you have any update on that. Yeah, if you ask me, that's a brilliant idea because then uh, the then the risk of the solar project or whatever can be clubbed with the risk of the borrower along with the house loan, housing loan and a lot of things uh, can be addressed. And uh, the way I see it, some, some of the banks who are who are doing home loans are still are, uh, I can give you the names later, are uh, can finance solar projects al along with home loans. It works very well for the banks. It's good for the bank, right? They can increase increase their size of size alone also. With the same kind of place. So I think that is because many yeah. banks from our people abroad, so they're not aware about circular itself. So I think there is an issue. Yeah, but it should be a proper home loan. Home improvement loan, you have to justify. I mean, what is the amount and all those things? Thank you very much. What has been your experience on uh, distributed solar? Have you conducted any solar projects on the UPP scale of state? Because there are a lot of projects which are coming up with Kalacha, 30 megawatt and all of that. So, have you uh, finance or I mean, what has been your experience on those? Because that is solely on a non-equal So, you are talking about the buyer being a private, private yeah. third party? Industry and commercial customers. Industry and commercial customers. So, as Yes Bank, we have actually funded those renew and the projects which you are talking about. But the only thing is, the borrower is renew here, with who the bank has a reasonable track record and relationship history. So, uh, everything can be evaluated considering all these points in mind. Just to add to that, that project is doing well because the legal counsel and that was sitting in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they have done and open the access. Sitting in front of you. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, uh, I think uh, open access projects, depending on the creditworthiness of the customer, are being funded in the market. We already have a good track record of funding open access wind projects. So in that sense, there's a precedent to that, that extent. Of course, some of the solar, if anything, has some greater benefits in terms of lower charges, etc. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. I think uh, thanks for the questions. In fact, you have quite extended uh, the session more by, I was planning to kind of wrap it up at 5.15. But thank you very much. I hope you found it useful. I hope uh, you found the responses addressing some of the concerns that you have. Um, thanks again. Thanks, Karan. Thanks, Harav. Thank Thank you, Definitely, I think uh, there's something interesting about panel discussions is that audience get to participate and a lot of queries can be answered and the panelists uh, kind of uh, addressed a lot of concerns of the audience and it was quite enlightening. Thank you very much. They deserve a huge round of applause from India. May I request uh, Mr. Mukund to present uh, momentous of appreciation to all the federal panelists, please. Yeah.